So you ask yourself, what the heck is Hakka? Well, first and foremost, it's a group of people from China who are also part of the larger Han Chinese ethnic group, which makes up about 90% of the people living in China. But, unlakke andere Chinese groups, de Hakka waren niet genoemd door de geografische region waar ze vandaan komen. Dat is omdat de Hakka waren nomadisch en veel 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 But for many different reasons, like invasions, famine, political and religious uprisings, there ended up being a series of five major migrations southward, spanning a time period of about 1,500 years. Then, for a whole other set of reasons around the world, such as the need for laborers in the Caribbean after the abolition of slavery, the discovery of gold in California, the building of the Panama Railroad, the war with Japan, and rebellions against Christians and other foreigners. The Hakka people had to leave China and started to venture out to all parts of the world. Today you'll find large concentrations of Hakka people in places like Canada, Taiwan, Jamaica, Malaysia, India, Singapore, the Mauritius and Peru. The latest estimate is over 80 million Hakka people around the world. Hakka is also the name of the dialect of the Chinese language. But not all Hakka sounds the same. There are over 10 different regional dialects, not only different because of the Chinese region of origin, but also affected by the international migrations. So the Hakka being spoken from one part of China to another might sound completely different, as well as the Hakka being spoken in somewhere like the Mauritius versus Hakka being spoken in Taiwan. But even though the Hakka are all spread out now, They're known to share some general characteristics. The biggest part of the Hakka identity is their ability to adapt. Because they had to move around so much, they learned to adapt to their surroundings, no matter how harsh or foreign the situation. A good example of this can be seen in Hakka food. Today, the cuisine has taken on so many different variations, depending on where the people settle. Traditional Hakka food is known to be heavily salted and fatty because it needed to travel well and keep for a long time. But now these characteristics are combined with the different international flavors of where the Hakka emigrated to. So it's not unusual to have Hakka Chinese food with Indian, Caribbean or even Creole spices. The Hakka are also a very practical people. They didn't have many luxuries and had to work hard to carve out an existence, so they didn't mess around when it came time to get the job done. A good example of this is shown in the historical fact that Hakka women didn't follow the traditional Chinese custom of binding their feet. The Hakka women were expected to lend a hand and do manual labor, not just sit around looking pretty. So they could not bind their feet because that would make it impossible to do things like work in the fields. And finally, the Hakka also have a very clannish nature and like to stick together. Other ethnic groups didn't welcome and accept them, so they turned to each other for help. They lived in walled villages and even developed a unique form of housing called a tulo, which is a large circular building made from rammed or packed earth. These Hakka villages were strategically built to stand against attack and provided a communal style of living for hundreds of people. So, there you have it, a very brief summary of what the Hakka culture is all about. If you want to find out more about the Hakka culture, and especially its food, come visit me at my website, hakkachinesefood.com.